to What Is Good. Today, I'm giving you some tips, some tricks, some hacks, whatever you wanna call them. Whatever gets the YouTube algorithm to give me the most views, that's what the title will be for this video. But I wanna give you guys some things that I know that will make street photography a little bit easier for you to get into, because I know it is one of the genres of photography that's more intimidating, more difficult to get started on, so I'm taking the years of my experience, condensing it into a video, and hopefully helping y'all out. So if you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button. The first thing I wanna talk about is finding the light and what this means is finding interesting light so in the morning when the Sun is coming up at night when the Sun is setting you get really dynamic light as you know shadows are longer there's more harsh light there's more opportunities for light to hit walls create shadows so use this to your advantage and get out to shoot in the morning get out to shoot later in the day look for these harsh shadows look for a wall where half the wall is split by a shadow look for trees casting shadows on walls there's nothing wrong with going out to shoot in the middle of the day either or going out on a cloudy day or anything like that it's just the Sun at the beginning and end of the day is really harsh and can add a really interesting light to your photo if you're struggling with ideas so real quick before we get into number two I want to thank the sponsor today Skillshare thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video click the link in the description on this video to explore your creativity and get two months of premium membership for free Skillshare is an online learning community that offers memberships with meaning with so much to explore real projects to create and support from fellow creators Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. Some of Skillshare's new exciting classes include Style Your Space, Bringing Creativity to Interior Design, taught by Emily Henderson, Instagram-worthy photos, Shoot, Edit, and Share, taught by Brandon Wolfell. Head to the link in the description on today's video to start exploring your creativity now with thousands of classes offered by Skillshare. First 500 people who click on the link in the description box will get two months of premium membership for free. And plans start as low as $10 a month. So number two is using a zoom lens. Now, typically in street photography, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter is kind of the, the go-to. It's considered the standard look. But one intimidating part of street photography is the fact that typically you're photographing people interacting with their environment. This can be very intimidating though if you have a 35 millimeter or a 24 millimeter. You have to get very close to this particular subject to make the photo you have in mind. So using a zoom lens takes a little bit of the fear out of this. Now, granted, I'm a little bit of a purist and I would agree that using a zoom lens isn't necessarily the truest of street photography but to get yourself started to get yourself going there is nothing wrong with it in my mind I think it's actually a great thing and a great way to get over this fear and kind of dabble in the idea of street photography so tip number three is called hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not yet and tip number three part two is called simple location and find the outliers so what this means is find yourself a simple location it doesn't matter what this is it can be a wall in your town that's just painted one color it's an interesting pastel color or it's got polka dots or it's just rough looking doesn't matter you have this simple location then you want to look for the situation the thing that doesn't correspond with everything else that's happening throughout the day that's kind of a fundamental theme in street photography is looking for the situation that's outside of the mundane normal situation that would typically happen inside of the scene so if you combine a simple or well-known scene with this outlier concept you got a good photo on your hands. Now tip number four is when you're getting started, shoot at something like F8. Don't worry about low apertures and depth of field. Why? Because it's another element of your photo that you're gonna have to worry about if you're trying to get your focus perfect, get everything tack sharp, and also get this nice blown out backdrop. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. That's definitely street photography. It's something I really like to incorporate into my photos. But when you're first getting started, just shoot at F8 because essentially, Everything is gonna be in focus. It's really easy to focus the camera and you can focus more on finding a composition that's impactful without dealing with all these other elements. Not to say you won't grow into it. It's just a nice training technique to make this whole process easier on yourself and really build your knowledge of compositions and timing and then you can move into other photo elements as you get better. Number five is actually my personal favorite and it's one of the reasons I like the Leica Q so much. I love bringing this camera out with me. It is the one lens concept. So essentially the idea here is go out to shoot with just one lens. Don't worry about bringing a bunch of different lenses with you because it just overcomplicates the process. The whole time you're out making photos, you're thinking, should I shoot at 50? Should I shoot at 35? What lens should I put on? Should I do this? Should I do that? Bringing one lens makes it easy because you only have one option. Now, there are the occasional time where you do miss out on a photo because you're not prepared, but chances are if you saw the photo coming and you were trying to change lenses, you'd miss out on the opportunity anyways. So I really like using this Leica Q and this 28 
millimeter because it eliminates all other options. I know I'm making a photo at 28 and if I want to change the composition, if I want to punch in or anything like that, I have to do it in the computer later on and I have to make the photo based on this idea in my head. So tip number six is start with simple compositions. Don't overthink it. My personal favorite is things like lead lines. All you got to do is find a bridge or a corridor, a hallway, anything that has a end point. All the lines are going to point towards that end point and then you just wait for a subject, something to happen inside of that. So all the lead lines are pointing straight towards the subject. It's very easy. It's very simple. You can find these anywhere. All you have to do is look for symmetry and then essentially wait. So starting with simple compositions like this make the entire process so much easier and you can also do things like finding natural framing things like doorways things like cracks in windows and then once again find the composition you like and then wait for a subject or something to happen inside of that composition and an even easier one is finding a situation where you have one static color you have one static feel so maybe a dark moody scene I have an example of this years ago where it was a lot of dark green trees and all I did was stand there and wait for someone to enter the frame. They had an umbrella with a bunch of colors on it. It really popped off this dark background and it looks solid. So you can look for situations like this where you have one color and then you look for a matching color or you create some type of contrast with a dark scene with a light subject, something like that. Now, number seven, the last thing that I want to talk about is give yourself an hour. Now, in a lot of the videos on this YouTube channel, I go out to shoot for an hour, for an hour and a half, and that's not because it makes an easy to follow theme for the video or a good title. It's because street photography takes a little bit longer creatively to get yourself going. As we talked about a lot in the video today, it's a lot about going out, looking for compositions, looking for interesting things happening, looking for these outliers in life. And the fact of the matter is 10 minutes might work for you, but realistically giving yourself an hour, hour and a half, two hours just makes it more likely that you find what you're looking for. Typically I'll go out and I'll define kind of a route in my head. I'll say, hey, I'm going to walk here. I'm going to walk here. I'm going to check this out. And as I get going, ideas start popping in my head. I start finding new things and just the creative ball starts rolling. So give yourself enough time to create in street photography. It's not this easy, straightforward process every time. There's a lot of, you know, stuff that comes to you when you're actually out creating. So give yourself an hour or more to get out to shoot and you'll probably get better results than just giving yourself, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Once again, though, nothing wrong with that. If you only have 15 minutes, it's better than nothing, but try to give yourself as much time as possible to find the things that you're looking for because you have to find them. They're not just gonna pop up in front of you most of the time. So there we go. That is seven street photography tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you wanna call this video to make the process of starting street photography a little bit easier for you. Take everything in today's video, apply it to your situation, and hopefully make some amazing street photos. If you make anything cool that you want me to see, tag me in it on social media, at Evan Ram. I promise you, I always look out for it and I try my best to see it. It's actually harder on Instagram than it is on Twitter. So tweet me on Twitter and show me anything you made with these tips. I would greatly appreciate it. Let me know in the comments if you have any other uh, street photography basic advice that you want to contribute to the conversation because I know a lot of people will go down there and read. So if you have good advice, leave it down there. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, you are the truth. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.